Hello and welcome to this presentation on gender sensitive communication in Next Food Project. My name is Nora Pistor and I work as the gender advisor for Welthungerhilfe in the Next Food Project. So in the next couple of minutes we will talk about why gender sensitive communication is important in this project and in general. So let me start by saying that there are a lot of gender stereotypes in our everyday communication. This can be in a conscious or unconscious way and is often related to the fact that everybody has expectation on someone else's gender or gender identity. These stereotypes that come through uh, in our language is manifested through our beliefs and stereotypes that are transported through the language. And they are particularly relevant and visible when we speak about professions, different target groups, but also for concepts that are not exactly related to persons or human beings, such as mother nature or father state. So if we look at when or in which instances we apply gender stereotypes in our communication, we see that it's very frequently used when using or applying pronouns with a gender, for example, he, she, his, hers, and so on. But also when we add information that is not actually relevant about the gender of a person when we describe an individual. Further, when we are describing objects in a gendered way. Or when we describe people of different genders with different adjectives, even though we want to describe the same um, the same fa fact or the same thing. Furthermore, we can perpetuate stereotypes through nonverbal communication, such as images, symbols, emojis, pictures, and so on. So there is a scale of gender inclusivity or exclusivity in our language that goes from sheer sexist or gender discriminatory language that is gender biased and that we should avoid to a gender neutral or gender blind language. Here we need to consider carefully when or if to apply such gender neutral language to finally gender sensitive language, which is what we want to favor. Now a question to apply every time when we produce language, so when we write or speak is, when should we apply gender neutral or when should we apply gender sensitive language? So this needs to be decided on a case by case basis, because sometimes it might be more useful to apply gender neutral language, particularly when we do not want to focus on the gender of the person we talk about. And in other cases, it might be more sensible to speak about uh, gender sensitive language. For example, when it is exactly the point that we try to make that there's a differentiation of genders for, particular, for example, in the profession of a person. So there we might, for example, highlight police woman instead of police man, if this is something that we want to make a point about. Language can also be discriminatory in terms of gender. For example, here in this example on the left side, it says the number of years an electrician will spend training depends on what country he is from. This is gender discriminatory because it is automatically assumed that the electrician is male. A gender neutral formulation would be to say depends on what country they are from. So instead of using the singular form in a gendered way, the plural form of they can be used. Here's another example about the uniform of a nurse and gender discriminatory is that she should cover the expense herself. While this could also be written in a more gender sensitive way by saying every nurse should take care of his or her own uniform and cover the expense themselves. So please note that in this sentence here, this is gender sensitive because his or her uniform are stated explicitly while the formulation in the plural form themselves is gender neutral. We also find 
um, something that we call semantic non-equivalence in our language. That means that for some nouns, there's a, a female form or a male form, but there's always a negative connotation for the female noun only. For example, governor, governess, master, mistress, host, hostess, and so on. We can find the same difference also when we use adjectives. So for example, some adjectives have a more derogatory meaning when they're used for women, but not for men, like bossy, pushy, emotion, emotional, frigid, hysterical, etc. But also when we look at the collection of data and the use of data, it can be very important to really specify the gender or the sex of the people that we talk about. For example, here you see this sentence states that 14% of people at a certain age stated that they had experienced sexual violence. And we do not know if these were female or male respondents. So it would be more useful to know, like in the example on the right side, the percentage of women and men who stated this. Another example for work package six, um, where the user engagement report is being produced, here, a number of different data is collected. For example, the percentage of social media users, newsletter users, and so on. And it would be very important also to know the gender of the users. So how many female and male users can Work Package 6 collect and analyze? And of course, this is interesting to know because we can find out that there are gender-specific barriers to access different kinds of media. And this could have important meanings for the development of the communication strategy. Here again, you can see that also through pictures, we can um, have a gendered language or gendered communication. When, for example, we put the male doctor in the front position and the female nurse in the back. On the right side, you see pictures um, where a rather gender balanced picture is shown. And here just to show you that there are also gender fluid emotions, emojis that were developed by Google in 2019. You see in the middle the emoji is what they call gender fluid. So to sum it up, a few tips here for using gender sensitive language in our everyday communication. We should avoid using pronouns for one gender only but also leave out when we speak about a professional where it is not necessary that we state whether it's a man or a woman. So instead of saying police man or police woman, we can simply use the neutral form of police officer. On the other hand, it is good to explicitly state or show both genders if there are some gender stereotypes that we want to make the reader aware of or if we think that our readership has certain assumptions on the gender of the persons that we talk about. For example, the farmer, we know that this is typically understood as a male farmer. So if we want people to um, feel included, then we could highlight female and male farmers. Also, it is always good to reflect whether we have stereotypes ourselves. For example, if we use the word career woman, is this gender sensitive or could this be gender discriminatory? So often it helps if we change the formulation to the other gender. So have you ever heard of a career man? Then another point is that we should use gender neutral adjectives. Um, for example, saying assertive instead of pushy or enthusiastic instead of emotional. And finally, avoiding um, that a gender is invisible in our speech or language. So if we say that we use the term of man for everybody, then this is not exactly neutral and not all the women might feel included. And this holds true for persons of non-binary gender, of course, as well. And another tip is we can sometimes switch the order of fixed phrases when we use them. For example, kings and queens, men and women, etc. So it's not too bad to simply change the chronology of these formulations from time to time. 
If you have further questions, this presentation also has um, some links to EU guidelines that have more examples and further detail on gender sensitive communication. Thank you very much.